Um, I think it's a team that's uh, you know trying to make the next step. You know, and, um, <coughs> they've given uh, Brett um, an opportunity to implement you know his system you know into this franchise, implement a system to the guys over years, and you know I think it's paying dividends for them now. They've you know sprinkled in some veterans with the young guys. Uh, the young guys are, are playing extremely well, you know, and Embiid and, <coughs> and obviously Ben, um, you know, and the, the Boston veterans in and JJ Redick, um, so uh, Amir Johnson. So they've they've you know, kind of you know reshaped their their whole roster uh, for the greater good. Surprise! It's happened so quickly. It seems like it surprised a lot of people in the league that things seem to have gotten together so quickly with them. It's not surprising. LeBron, how would you describe your relationship with uh, Ben Simmons? You guys worked out together and did some things together in the offseason. Uh, what do you mean? Just like, what, how often do you talk to him, or what kind of advice? We got do you a great like? relationship. LeBron, what have you been? What have been your impressions of how Ben's playing so far this season? Yeah, he's been great. <clears throat> when you look at his potential, um, what comparisons do you think might be valid that people make to your game, and what similarities do you maybe not see between? Uh, I, I don't know. I mean. That's for you. That's you guys. You guys do that comparison stuff. Um, I think Ben is his own makeup of speed, power, quickness, ability to pass the ball, ability to have a feel for the game. Uh, and Ben is Ben, and I am who I am, and so on and so on. So you guys kind of do that comparison stuff. When you look at that young nucleus they kind of built here, do you think at all about just as, the, as they stand in the East, how they're going to go in the future here? No. Because I'm still here. I think about what I'm going to do in the future. I, I'm not thinking about what other teams are doing. LeBron, let me speak to that. Um, we only see you once a year, but I was just wondering this the other day. Michael Jordan averaged 20 a game at the age of 40. Is that something you think you could aspire to at some point? Uh, no, I don't think that got damn far in the future. <laughs> <laughs> I might be 33 in December, man. No, I don't think that's too far. All right. Excuse my language, but okay. sheesh. <laughs> You know, just take me there, huh? <laughs> yeah, you took it all there. What in particular are you looking forward to about coming up against Ben? It's not about me versus Ben. It's about the Cavs versus 76ers, and we want to continue to play good ball. They've been playing good ball, especially at home, so it's not about me versus him at all. When you when you guys look at Sixers film and you look at Ben, what has he been doing that's made him successful so far this season from your point of view when you're watching game film? Um, he's been successful. He's been very successful. Well, why is that? What, like, what do you see on the court? No, I can't give up what, we, what we've seen. Yeah. LeBron, what do, you, what do you make of Joel Embiid? Obviously, the guy who had his rookie season shortened last year. You saw him in spurts. But, uh, it oh, he's like good. He's very good. Very talented. Multi-dimensional. Can shoot the ball from the, um, from the outside. Can get to the post. Footwork. Up and unders. Plays a lot of energy. And he's funny, too. Yeah. Very funny, very that's funny a, guy. Some people seem important? affected about you know the way he you know. Who, who, I say are, some people. People. who are some people? Players have you know who, who gone back and forth with him. You like that in the game in terms of the talk and everything who else? Who cares? What, what are you gonna do about it? You gonna fight him? Who cares? People are so sensitive. Well, you were in the things about a few years ago, and you were asked about the Sixers, and you just kind of said the fan base should be patient. It's not instant oatmeal. Um, did, did you see? That's why we asked you the question about surprise. I said, no, I'm not surprised. Be patient, man. You just got to be patient. You know, and guys, obviously, you guys have a mantra here of trust the process, but you know, patience, you got to just be patient with, you know, if you want to build something, if you want to try to build something, you can't just automatically think it's going to happen overnight, man. And uh, you know, that's what they've, like I said, it's, the organization has done a great job of believing in Brett Brown's system, believing in his, what he wanted to do. and. And they gave it some time. You know, you got sometimes a lot of a lot of teams, a lot of organizations in all sports kind of give up on the system or give up on the guy very fast and not allow him to to implement and, and get players. I mean, you got to have players too. You know, and now that he has some, you know, the last couple of years he's continued to build the, the the players and the personnel and things to fit. You know, what he wants to do and they're playing good ball. Brown, what do you like most about what, Brown? What do you like most about the way he played on the road? Who us? Yeah. <clears throat> Just been very, very resilient. No matter when teams, home teams have made uh, runs, um, you know we've kind of been very resilient with the whole thing, and um, you know, we've been playing some really good ball, especially defensively. Yeah, that's that's most important for us. LeBron, remember your first trip to Philly, man, and you 
Uh, oh yeah, I remember. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. What about it? We won. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 You remember playing against him? I mean, he was uh, a highly he was, rated player like you yeah. were in high school. Yeah, he was. He was the all-time leading scorer in Philadelphia history, past Will Chamberlain. So uh, we knew we had our hands full trying to shut him down because you know we didn't want to lose. So you know, we knew all about him. Brian, I got to go off topic with you. I know you're a Cowboys fan. What's your take as you're here in Philadelphia on this Eagles team that's kind of on top of everything right now? Um, I got three three guys that I love watching play. Um, Tom Brady, Antonio Brown mixed with Le'Veon Bell. They're on the same team, so I get an opportunity to watch the same guys on the, at the same time. And uh, my favorite player right now is Carson Wentz. I told my brother that early in the season um, that uh, I just love the way he plays the game. You know. Um, you know, his the way he able to get the progressions, you know, throughout the course of a three step drop or a five step drop and then if everything breaks down his ability to run, get outside the pocket, either make passes or get you know, get yards with his feet. Um, you know, just a very smart player, uh, from the outside looking in obviously. And uh, you know, they got a, a really good team, you know. I'm a cowboy fan, I'm a Browns fan, but I'm I'm a fan of sports and I know sports, so with the way you just said that, is that as a Browns fan? Disappointed that they passed on Carson Wentz? Uh, <laughs> they're passing a lot of people. <laughs> we want to make this the most successful toy drive ever here at the Q. And I'm challenging you guys to kick us off to see who can bring back the most toys. You guys ready? Go! <laughs> Whoa, Sir Cece, this is really great. But where's Moondog? The Cavs and Monsters Toy Drive, presented by Step 2, takes place at Cavs and Monsters Home Games between now and December 9th. Donate and help make this holiday season one to remember for children in our community.